<laughs> so uh, <laughs> this is particularly apt this morning. This is, this is California. This is where I live, just, just here. Um, this is how far I've come for this. And isn't it awesome that it says pond? That's what you really need to know. <clears throat> so, somebody in the audience can help me with it. Hello? Is that right? Uh, sorry? Um, so, uh, well, I'll, get, I'll get into why I'm here. So, um, I just want to, first of all, uh, really... Oh, yeah, it's my second time up, so I apologise for that. That's really unusual. But I, I just want to thank David and Claire for... <clears throat> kind of allowing me to do this and allowing this to happen because it's, um, it's pretty meaningful for me. So I'll, 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 I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story, so indulge me in that. <laughs> and then I'm going to try and give you some thunder learnings and some things that I've been thinking about. Um, so the first one is, uh, my name is Thomas Owen Rogers. With that, I'm Welsh. All my family is Welsh. They all come from a place called Abersachan. How many, actually, how many people here are Welsh? I should be fine. <laughs> this presentation was going to get a bit hairy. But anyway, this is... Uh, so I, my, all my family are from Wales. Um, as, soon as, as soon as my parents got married, they, they, they drove down to London and stayed in London. And so I was born in, in London. Um, and then this, was, this is my grandmother here. And this is the Morris Minor that we used to travel up the M4 in every, every moment that they could think of to bring me back here to connect with my heritage. I'd be in this car. It wasn't a good start. It was a in fact, it was a terrible start to this. And I have to say, for those of you who drove from London to... to it's, rough, it's, roughly, it's roughly kind of Newport. It's just up from Newport. It used to take eight and a half hours. <laughs> there wasn't even much traffic on the road. Uh, and then this is, this is uh, I'm sorry, it's, uh, can you guys see it? It's, a, it's feeling a little blown out on it, I don't know. Um, this is me. How cute, look, I've still got the same hair. <laughs> this is me. You can't really see my, I, the reason I've got this picture is this, this is us outside 8 North Road in, uh, in, um, in Abersachen. And uh, my mum's face says it all. Like, she was the one fucking making me do it. <laughs> And this is my brother, and we got there all the time. And they were really, it was this kind of like, we want you to connect with, with your family. We want you to really understand where you come from, even though we have, quote-unquote, escaped to London. <laughs> and uh, so we did. And we did it all throughout, my, all throughout my childhood, from literally the age of zero through to about, um, I don't know, 15, when I could start saying no. And uh, I learned about Welsh people. <laughs> That's why I asked how many Welsh people they would like, pitch forks and stones and shit. And um, actually, it was Scott Davis. Is he still here today? No. He, uh, when he said it yesterday, I actually thought I felt much more comfortable about this presentation because he was he used this word as well, which is can seem a little negative, but you know, I, I definitely felt this when I was here. Like there was some aggression towards me. So as I grew up, that Londoner. This parochial kind of like village mentality that, you know, it's all very insular. Um, my goodness. <laughs> uh, I tried to fit in, but um, certainly wasn't allowed to. I, I have these memories of going to the playground in, in Abersuck <laughs> and just people wanting to kick the shit out of me. And I, and I didn't even really know why. And I think it's just because I wasn't from here. I don't think there was any other reason. Um, very single-minded, like incredibly single-minded. To the point where, um, you know, you couldn't, uh, you, you couldn't, you couldn't even have a conversation. Like they would never change their mind about anything. I remember, remember my grandmother. Um, I remember where we would always turn up and there'd always be ham sandwiches. And I said to her once when I'd grown up a little bit, I said, "Why don't we have anything other than ham sandwiches?" And she didn't even answer my question. <laughs> like it was, yeah. um, and stubborn. So that kind of, they kind of go together, but that, like, you know, we're done talking. It's, we're done. It's over. And so, you know, at that point, <laughs> with all these other traits, especially this one, you're like, okay, we're done talking. <laughs> so um, that's the bad bit over. It's awesome from now on. Um, so I, uh, 
I then went to, I went, I actually went to study, um, I was doing, I was one of those kids that was trapped in the, the British school system, so I'd done, um, I'd done um, sciences and maths, and I thought that's what I wanted to do, realised it wasn't, um, tried to apply for art school, and everywhere said, no, you've got to go back and do your, your um, what was it called? Foundation. Foundation, thank you. And I couldn't do my foundation, so um, I'm really coming out to you all. I couldn't do this foundation because I hadn't done O-level art. And I was kind of sitting there thinking I'd ruined my life. And I found this, I found this one guy who, who uh, believed in cloud busting. I think he was a little crazy, who was running an art college in, in Killeen. And uh, I brought in this portfolio of work. <laughs> I'm actually getting an interview. I brought in this portfolio of work, and I just read the book, The Theory of Chaos. And we, we didn't open my portfolio of work. We just talked about the theory of chaos. And then he, he offered me a place there and then. So it, and it worked out really well. Uh, so, Killeen, I'll just explain. Killeen is this um, old Roman, is that, is, it's an old Roman fortress town, yeah. right? Yeah. J very, very close to where all my family's from, and, um, and, and very much like those words. Probably more like those words than anywhere else. Actually, Newport was voted, when I was there, the most violent city in uh, the UK, <laughs> just, <laughs> just so you all know. And uh, anyway, so um, I, went to, I, I, I went back to Killeen, Partly to go and do art, but also partly because my, um, my grandmother was there. My grandfather had just died, and she needed looking after. And um, she lived just up the road from the college, like three miles up the road from the college. And uh, I, I, um, I, got to know, I got to know Wales through her, through that, gosh, poof, through that moment in time, just before she died. Um, and so <clears throat> I, really did, I really did kind of start to understand... Um, it from the inside. And I think because I was going to her hometown and I was looking after her over a period of three years, people started to let me in. And so I really started to understand that actually that aggression is actually much more about passion. It's much more this kind of like burning eyes that people have um, to get things done and they don't want to let anything get in their way. Um, the procureness is really patriotic. <laughs> so just, but just so you know, when Wales play England, I'm supporting Wales. <laughs> And, and, that's, and, that, and that's not just because they're winning now, but it's, it, it's, it's, actually, it's actually how I feel. And so, you know, and, and I now feel like that about the States, but if the States play England, I'm English. But if the States play someone else, I'm American. So I've really got this notion of what it means to be patriotic. And it, it's, a, it's an incredibly powerful thing. Um, this is interesting because these could be two ends of the spectrum. But um, once you're in, you're in, in Wales. And so, um, and I don't think it's, I don't think that's, I don't necessarily think that means as a, as a, as a country, but the place in which you go and find that space that you can exist, you're really in. So my, my grandmother used to live in this tall tower block and, and I used to walk in and it was before I knew, before I knew everybody, this tower block was the coldest, most scary place on the planet of the earth for me to go and visit my grandmother. Three years later, I'd walk in and people would be hand, <laughs> those same hand sandwiches and a cup of tea, literally as soon as you walked into the tower block. Um, this focus, I think, is incredibly true. I mean, I've seen it here. Um, I've seen it when I went to the, the Hyatt factory um, and spent a couple of hours with the grandmasters there. You see it at Forest, that kind of notion of being really focused on things that designers take. You know, we talk about details all the time. I, not, not a lot of, uh, I don't know if a lot of cultures do that that much. Certainly a lot of industries don't. And stubborn is this kind of like driven, <laughs> like just, I'm going to do this and never, ever, ever give up. There's a really good side to that. Um, so, I hope I've redeemed myself somewhat. That's the little history of me. Thank you, David. <laughs> Thank you all the Welsh people in the audience. You love me now. <clears throat> that was risky. So, uh, back to why I'm here. This is a picture off, off the internet, um, of, of not of this. Actually, this is taken when it's not raining, but this is Cardigan Bay. And I just want to give everyone a top tip that does a presentation. When you go into Google and you search for images, Go to the filter that says large scale and pull the large scale images only when you do a presentation. It really helps. Um, so back to why I'm here. Sorry. I, I can't. So the first thing that I want to share with everybody is the kind of big learning. I've, I've been doing what I do for professionally for uh, 18 years. But this is it, guys. This is the big reveal. It's all about people. That's it. Like It doesn't, it doesn't get more than that. It's about who you work with. It's about um, what you're looking at when you're trying to fulfill people's needs. 
It's about the relationships you build. It's about the impact you have. It's all about people. Everything's about people. And so I want to share just a few stories um, by what I mean by this. And the first one is actually um, a professional story. It's, it's, um, uh, this is one of our researchers at IDO. And we got hired by this huge... Uh, this, this story really changed my perception. We got hired by this huge North American um, um, healthcare provider to reinvent the um, emergency care experience. And they sent, they sent it to us. They sent us all their, all their data and everything. And we got all these spreadsheets and these graphs and these charts and everything. And at the, at the, at the, at the final, we, we presented this. And they asked us to come back and we presented this. I've just, this is just a 15-second clip. But it was, it was two minutes. And we had their whole board. And we just played it for two minutes. That's it. We played that to their board for two minutes and said, and we, sh and we showed all the graphs and we showed all the charts they'd sent us, and th th that was their description to us of their customers' experience. And we then played this for two minutes, and their board was absolutely flawed. I mean, they didn't know what to do, which was great, because then they employed us to help them try and figure <laughs> it out. But when I saw this as well, I was like, wow, it's so, people are so disconnected from the people that they're serving. Because this is really what it's like when you go into an ER ward. Actually, it's one of the most painful, one of the most insecure moments when, when you're probably at one of your most emotional. Um, I know I used this yesterday, but I think, um, you know, if you can, and a lot of people talked about a lot of these things, it gets harder to get, go as you go <laughs> later on in the, in the conference. But just this notion of insight is, is so, so powerful. Uh, and, and you can build huge businesses that are hugely successful and have an amazing impact on the world if you stay true to kind of those insights. And so, again, I know I told the story, but this is a slightly different one. But, you know, the, the reason that Netflix started was because they realised people hated paying late fees. I mean, who here has paid a late fee? And you're just like, you know, when Blockbuster were around, and you're just like, really? Like, I didn't even know I had it. How's it cost me, like, $57? I, I, you know? Um, and so, you know, it still costs me $57. I'm just paying it <laughs> once a month, and it comes out of my account, and it's my choice. Um, so they built a whole business on this, and like I said the other day, now they're, you know, they're, they're becoming a content provider, and they're going to go to new places, and they're going to hopefully re help reinvent the, the studio industry, which should, be, should become pretty exciting. Um, so that was kind of it starts with people. This, this, is, this is kind of, it, it, it should evolve. So I, I, did ask this just, I did ask this to a couple of people. Does, any, does people here know this app, Mailbox? Yeah. Oh, my God. I've, I, so I've, I've had email from, like, I don't know, 97 or something like that. I've never had zero inbox until I got this app. And I had zero inbox, like, in a day. And I, I know you're all thinking that's impossible, but it's not. I'm useless. I've, like an assistant to help me with email, and I've never been able to do it. It's amazing. And anyway, so the point is, if, get it if you can, but the point is, is um, it's, they started as a to-do list. So they started as this app called Orchestra, and they had huge uptake, and then like all to-do lists, it just fell off, and people just weren't coming back. And so they, and I know it's a really trendy word, but they pivoted, but they really did pivot, and, and I, I asked the CEO for, for the story, and, um, you know, they, they essentially went back and they really looked at how people were using it and really what were the initial insights and what were the things that, that they, were, they had something in test at that point, but how were people using it and what was important about it. And they transferred those, they transferred those behaviours. So, uh, you know, just this notion of actually getting things done. So turning a to-do to list into actually doing things. Where's the thing that that most happens today is in, is in your email? It's in your inbox. And yet we all get completely overwhelmed. So I personally just, I look at it and like, <laughs> unless it's actually like a huge fire that's happening, I just, oh, and it goes down the page and I don't have to deal with it until somebody else screams or something happens. This actually allows me to, 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 to do something with it. And so we had this, I, I was talking to somebody yesterday, we, we had this debate, this isn't, this, isn't an e this isn't an email, this isn't a new email client. This is, a, this is a box for you to get stuff done. It just so happens your email goes through it. 
I mean, even right now, my, my inbox is, is zero, which is absolutely astonishing. And it's just through behaviours. It's just through the way in which we deal with stuff, which is to save things to do later that will pop back up. Um, and then I think it, I think it ends, um, well, it doesn't end, but I think success as well is a huge component of where it plays into people. So this is a, this is, this is a very, very personal story. Um, I'm on the board of a, of, a, of, a, of a North American shoe company, a really old shoe company, like churches. Um, it's the oldest one in North America. Five minutes. It does go quickly. Um, and this company was very, it was a very depressed company, and nobody wanted to do anything. And um, I would say we, and I, I include myself in that, but the whole, the whole company has turned itself around. And it was amazing. It's taken about four years, but it was amazing to go there three years ago and nobody even wanted to work. And I, and I share in this because these are the pictures of these shoes that I had made for this conference. So I actually put, I told, I told one of the factory workers that I was coming to this conference and they wanted to make me a pair of shoes to wear for this. Nobody would have done that three years ago. They couldn't give a shit three years ago. Now they're so proud, and the energy in that factory is unbelievable. And it's a factory like, it's, you know, it's a big version of your factory. Um, people are proud. They want to be there. They're, they're paid by the hour, but they don't really, like, they want to be there. They want to be valuable. They want to be heard, and they want to get their stuff out. This, is a, this was a sketch that was in the New York Times that was fascinating, and, and, the, and the article was all about how, um, you know, these containers used to go to China full of America's trash, and now we're shipping product back to China. So, you know, we didn't go offshore, we stayed onshore, um, and now we're shipping our product at full price back to China because they're looking for the quality that we can produce with pride. Um, that really means a lot to me. It's one of the most impactful things I think I've, I've managed to achieve. So, in the seven minutes I have left, um, I, mean, I want to give you some learnings from the road. This is, this is, a, this is, a, this is a product I launched. This is a company that I launched while I was at IDO, and it's a... It's a it's, an, it's, it's like the holy grail of cleaning. Um, and, and for those of you that know anything about cleaning, all of the antibacterial products um, have, a, have a product called triclosan in them that goes into the waterways and is linked to, to cancer. And, uh, but it hasn't, been, it hasn't been officially acknowledged by the FDA. So um, they still, all the big companies still produce it. We have a product that is as efficacious as all of those with registrations that we can't get to the market. We just cannot make it successful. It runs, but it, we cannot make it successful. Um, and I, I haven't got time to go into it. I'm happy to talk to you about it. But, you know, the question, and the question I ask myself about that, because I could be really, I've let a lot of people down in this, people that I promised we would get it to market, people I made these emotional promises to. I have to, I have to learn, live with that. And so the way I can deal with that is to actually think about the learnings I've got from it. And so I think for me, we, we didn't, um, we didn't unlike, unlike the mailbox example, we didn't embrace our failure early enough. And so we didn't move quick enough. We just tried to keep pushing against the same wall. So I said, so my question was, how might you embrace failure to succeed sooner? I think that's apt for all of you. I think, you know, you should be passionate about the thing you're building. But if, but if it's not working, look around, reassess that. Um, this is... These are beautiful images, normally. <laughs> I'll invite anyone to my room to look at these images later. Um, this, is the, this is something I call the big strawberries, the big strawberry test, because I have two young kids, and if you give kids strawberries, they will go for the big strawberry every time. But I think that's, I think that's probably 99.999% of the world's population will do that with anything. They'll go for the bigger, redder, better-looking, more succulent strawberry. But we all know that actually... The medium-sized one actually probably is going to taste better because the other one's probably been pumped full of some sort of shit and doesn't really taste that good. Um, 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 and so, so, you know, I, and I also I think it's kind of like post-Second World War as well, whether it's the street, whether it's the pension funds that invest in the, 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 um, the companies, whoever's fault it is, whether it's the consumer's fault, whoever's fault it is, is we're just looking for big. The whole time we're looking for big. And you know, even at IDO, we struggle with this because you know, the way we measure our business is how big is it? And yet, we all agree that it's the quality that counts, not the bigness. So my question to you guys is, how might you measure betterness, not biggerness? 
And I think that those conversations are the things that we all hope openly talk about here. We're still no good at measuring it. So how do those factory workers feel? Why did they bother to make me these shoes? Measuring that, finding a way to measure that would be amazing. And then this is, uh, have you heard of Tough Mother? Yeah, yeah. So, so this is, for me, this is my own personal, where I am on my journey at the moment. This is my personal, not, not Tough Mudder. Not, I don't want to be electrocuted. I don't want to pay to be electrocuted. I don't mind the climbing over walls. Um, but for me, this is, this is kind of what I'm working on right now, uh, honestly, um, because I think it's, it's uh, the thing that inhibits business. I think it inhibits all of us. And um, I think it's this thing about ego, actually. The first image I had up here was Lance Armstrong, but he's the, he was like the wrong image of it. But it's like um, this notion of collaborating together in a post-ego fashion. So our company, is tr our company is truly built on the kind of upside-down pyramid. So the more senior you are at IDO, the more it is your job to make everybody else look great and to achieve their potential. And if for one moment, and I've... Trust me, I've done this. I could constantly trip over. You're like, but I, but I, I empowered everyone. I made it happen. <laughs> like, you just get slapped down because there's, there, people don't want to hear that. But if, you, but, if, but if you make people successful and you truly, truly make it about them, that will come through in the end and you will be successful. So my, my parting thought is that, like I said, I've got two kids and, and, um, and they're young. And if I, can, if I can embody this, it, this into them, then I, I would feel really proud about that. It took me a long time, I feel like it took me a long time to learn um, my heritage and what my heritage get, had to give me. I want to I kind of give it to them. Because I think this, when I think about this type of conference, and I think about the, the kind of energy that goes with being an entrepreneur and being out there creating new opportunities in the world, these, these are sort of five traits that I think would really help with that. Dioch. <laughs>